or praises of our Almighty Allah, our Creator, our Sustainer, the one who gives honor to whomsoever he wills, and the one who deprives people of honor from whomsoever he wills. From amongst the great virtues and attributes that Almighty Allah bestows upon a believer is humbleness. And one who is deprived of that humbleness is from amongst the worst of people. It's from amongst the worst of creation. And being deprived of humbleness is one having pride. One being arrogant. A person thinking that they are better than others. Almighty Allah mentions in the Quran, Surah An-Nisa, verse number 36. Inna Allah la yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura. Almighty Allah does not love those that are boastful and that have pride in them. What is pride? What is arrogance? The definition has been given by the Prophet وسلم, in a hadith mentioned in Sunan Abi Dawood. Rasulullah said, Al Kibar, Man Batir al Haq, wa Ghamat al Nas. Two parts have been mentioned. Number one, one who rejects the truth. When the truth is presented to that person, even though that individual knows that he or she is upon falsehood and that the truth has been presented, the correct position has been presented, but that person thinks of it as an insult to accept the truth. So he or she rejects the truth. That is pride. That is arrogance. Thinking about your own position and what people will say, and rejecting the truth in that situation, knowing you are upon the falsehood, this is what is known as arrogance. But to accept the truth, to accept that I made a mistake, or that I was upon the falsehood, and that now Almighty Allah has blessed me with the truth, to accept that truth is not pride. To accept that truth is not arrogance. To accept that truth is humbleness. Therefore, one who has pride, one who has arrogance, that individual is deprived of the mercy of Almighty Allah. So that is the first part. The second is one who looks down upon others. That individual looks down upon others. He or she thinks that they are better than others. <coughs> They may think that they have more knowledge than others, therefore look down upon them. They may think they are more wealthier, therefore they may look down upon others. They may think that their skin color is greater than others, so they look down upon others. They may think that their family, their lineage is greater than others, therefore they look down upon others. This is what we find in society. You don't have to go far to find this. People looking down upon others. People thinking that they are superior. Look at the class system that they have here in this country. Working class, middle class, upper class. The whole idea of this is to show who is greater than the other. But in the sight of Almighty Allah, none of this is greatness. What class you are from, how rich your family is, your family status, none of this has any measurement in the sight of Almighty Allah. But rather, inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The most noblest, the greatest in the sight of Allah, the upper class in the sight of Allah, <coughs> the most superior in the sight of Allah are those that fear Almighty Allah the most. They are those that have the most piety. They are the ones that are the most righteous. They have the most good feelings. If you have that, 
and you have no other materialistic things within this dunya. You may not have much money. You may be unemployed. You may have hardly anything whatsoever of this dunya. But because you have the highest level of God-fearingness in the sight of Allah, you are from amongst the upper class. It's all about the taqwa. But if we abstain from that, and if we are deprived of that, and look at the materialistic things that we have. Look at my house, look at my car, look at my wealth, look at my job, look at my family. Looking at these things and then looking down upon others. This is what will turn us into an arrogant person, a prideful person. So like the Quran mentions, one who has the arrogance, one who has the pride, they are deprived of the love of Almighty Allah. Allah. Imagine being deprived of the love of Almighty Allah. You know, the dunya is such, if we have people loving us, it makes you feel good. But imagine the Creator, the one who made us, Almighty Allah, He is saying, the fact that you have pride in you, the fact that you are arrogant, I do not love you. Imagine how wretched and unfortunate that individual is who is deprived of the mercy of Almighty Allah and deprived of the love of Almighty Allah. But remember, Almighty Allah also mentions in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra, verse number 37, <coughs> <laughs> Do not walk upon the earth with arrogance. You see some people, the way they walk, especially young teenagers, they have that swag to their walk, trying to act like a bad man, wannabe gangsters. They think that this style of walking, this way of their walking, will give them respect in the community. People will be like, wow, this guy, look at him, look at the way he walks. But in reality, there may be other teenagers praising that individual, but in the sight of Almighty Allah, his status is decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. With each step, his status is being minused, and before you know it, he may not have any status in the sight of Almighty Allah. Therefore, when we walk, we also must walk in a humble way. We must not move our shoulders in a way that we are arrogant, that we are superior than others, the way some people walk. May Allah protect us from that. <coughs> My dear respected brothers, remember, when Almighty Allah created Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, He created him he mentioned to the angels that I am going to create inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I'm going to make a caliph, a representative of mine within the dunya. So Almighty Allah asked the angels for their thoughts, what their opinion is in relation to this. So what did they say? <laughs> The angel said to Almighty Allah, Ya Allah, you're going to create people, humans, who are going to cause chaos within the land, and they are going to shed blood. Almighty Allah replied to them, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. Verily I know that which you do not know. I am the creator. I know why I am going to make my caliph. You do not know. So when Almighty Allah created Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam to give him that superiority over the angels and for them to recognize his greatness, he gave Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam knowledge of all things. The names of everything, their function, their purpose, the knowledge of everything. And then he asked the angels 
to test it. You could test the knowledge. So what was hap what happened was a test took place. Almighty Allah presented things and asked them, what is the name of these things? The angels did not have the answer, but each time Sayyiduna Adam salam had the answer. Showing his superiority, showing his greatness. But then, Almighty Allah commanded all of the angels, including a creation that is inferior than the angels, such as the jinns. He instructed them all to prostrate to Sayyiduna Adam salam. All of them prostrated, except for one jinn, which was Shaytan Iblis. Iblis refused to prostrate to Sayyiduna Adam salam. And then Almighty Allah states, Qala ma mana'aka alla tasjuda idh amartuk. When I commanded you to prostrate, to do sajda, to Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, out of respect, not out of worship. Two types of prostrations, sajda. One is of worship, which is only for Almighty Allah. And one was for ta'zim, for respect, which was allowed until the prohibition came at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now to even prostrate to somebody out of respect is haram in Islam. But at that time it was permitted. So they were told to prostrate to Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam to show his greatness, to show his superiority. But Iblis refused to prostrate. And when Almighty Allah asked him why, what was his answer? Ana qala ana khayrun minha. He said, I am better than him. This is why the Jum'ah topic states, I am better than him. It connects to this. Ana khayrun minha. I am better than him. Why? Khalaqatani min nar. Because you made me from fire. وَخَلَقَتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ And you made him from clay. Therefore I am superior than him. I am greater than him. Therefore I will not prostrate to him. Look at the one who is commanding the person to prostrate, meaning Iblis to prostrate, the creator. And the audacity that Iblis has to refuse to the command of Almighty Allah this shows how dangerous arrogance and pride is. That if Iblis could disobey Almighty Allah after knowing Almighty Allah, seeking that knowledge and closeness from Almighty Allah for all of those years, but after all of that still disobeying Almighty Allah immediately, if we also have that pride, if we also have the arrogance, this is what will happen to us. So obviously, Iblis was dismissed from paradise and he was removed from paradise and he went onto earth. And because he asked for some time until the day of judgment, rather before that, where the blowing of the trumpet would take place, at that point, he said, give me respite up to that stage because I will misguide all the people. Give me the opportunity. I became disobedient. I will make sure that your servants, O Allah, will also disobey you. Look at his audacity. Saying this to Allah. We would hesitate to say something like this to our elders out of respect. And here we're talking about the Creator the sustainer, the cherisher, the one who made us. This is the way Iblis is acting in front of Almighty Allah. And give me time until then and watch, I will make them disobedient to you. Not only will I make them disobedient, I will make the majority of them ungrateful to you. Whatever you bestow upon them, I will make them ungrateful to you. Now, if we are ungrateful, now if we are disobeying Allah, if we are not doing what Allah has told us to do, then we know who we are supporting in this war 
between our Creator and the cursed one, Iblis. If we support the statement of Iblis, then it is as if he is winning, even though there is no doubt our Creator will never lose a war, and he is always the winner, and he is never ever lost, nor will he ever lose. But by disobeying Allah, we are supporting Iblis. But by disobeying Iblis and following Almighty Allah, we are making the statement of Almighty Allah even more greater. That I have made my creation and you will see from amongst them, there will be those that will be obedient to me. And because of their obedience, I am making my creation. My dear respected brothers and honorable listeners at home, the sisters, pride and arrogance is such a dangerous thing that even if we have a tiny amount of it in our hearts, inside us, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in Al-Mu'ajam al-Kabir, لا يدخل الجنة من في قلبه خردلة من كبر One who has even the amount of a small seed The way you have a mustard seed A tiny seed An individual who has even that amount of pride inside him That individual will not enter paradise and normally people don't have that little pride, but rather so much more. But if we have that, we will not enter paradise. But not only that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went further and mentioned in the hadith in Musnadul Imam Ahmad, the akabbahu allahu ala wajhihi fin nar. That Almighty Allah, that person with pride in him, Almighty Allah will have that person thrown into the hellfire. How will he be thrown into the hellfire? By being thrown and landing upon his face. That is how cursed that individual is and how much he is deprived of the mercy of Almighty Allah. That Allah does not want to see his face. And he will be thrown and will land on his face into the hellfire. May Allah protect us from that. May Almighty Allah make us humble, protect us from pride, protect us from arrogance. May He always make us from amongst those that are humble.